Hello everybody, I'm back. The long-awaited update to my squash vine borer resistant variety experiment is finally here and I'm so sorry that I didn't get this to you guys sooner. Now, warning, this is going to be a long, drawn-out video discussing my experiences and opinions, so this is your excuse to grab another cup of coffee and settle in. I also want to apologize in advance for my voice. I'm a little congested. I have cold. I've pretty much been sick for the last seven, eight months. We've got the kindergarten crud over here, so hopefully we're nearing the end. Anyways, let's go on and dive right in. Before we start, I do want to say that 2022 was one of my worst seasons yet, and this is part of the reason I'm just now returning from my YouTube hiatus. I will add a break screen and will let you guys know in the description at which point the varieties start, but the following information sets the stage. So I really want you guys to hear this before I talk about my results with the varieties, because the conditions, the environment, that all affects how your harvest, how your plants, how everything's gonna go for you. Now, this awful season was the result of a variety of reasons. It was a perfect storm of disaster. So let's be brutally honest for a second and talk about all of the challenges that we faced last year here in my region and personally in my garden. To begin, we had some pretty hard late freezes, which seemed to bump right up against some harsh and unheard of heat waves. So it was really cold, drought, and then heat wave. We had the drought-like conditions during the time that I started to direct sow, accompanying the cold and hot weather. Already having late, unseasonably cold weather combined with drought-like conditions that led straight into the back-to-back -back heat waves is incredibly hard on any garden. However, it didn't stop here. My squash seeds went into the ground during about a three-week drought period. I usually do not water in seeds or transplants. I know, unconventional but I'm telling you I've got a reason for that. So anyways, it took about two weeks before my squash seeds came up. As the seedlings were breaking ground, the cucumber beetles were already trying to decimate them. The seedlings that made it were heavily damaged by the cucumber beetles, and at this point, I probably had about a 50% or less survival rate. I'm pretty sure it was less than 50%. I replanted a few of them, and I've never had a severe problem with cucumber beetles in the past, so I guess this was our first round, and hopefully the worst one for quite some time. The squash bugs were late in arriving, so that was a much needed break for the plants. They eventually descended upon them within two or three weeks of the plants, finally overpowering the cucumber beetles, so it was just punch after punch for my plants. I happen to have a ridiculous amount of Tennessee spinning gourd volunteers, courtesy of my son smashing them all over the yard and garden. Since those were big, healthy plants that were not being plagued by the cucumber beetles at first, the squash bugs headed towards those and left my intended plants alone just long enough for them to get a foothold after the great cucumber beetle catastrophe. As the plants struggled to take off in the drought-like conditions, we had crazy heat waves hitting our area incredibly early. These heat waves caused plants to wilt, kept them from flowering and fruiting, and it resulted in one of the worst years for southern blight that I have ever seen. Not only was my squash plagued with problems, my entire garden was. The heat and drought were relentless in 2022. Even my female ducks lost two clutches of eggs as they simply got too hot. After all of the loss in the garden, I decided to turn my focus elsewhere after a while and let nature take its course. Some years, it's all you really can do. Now, one thing I did have success with was watermelon and cucumbers. There were so many that I just didn't know what to do with them all. So while 2022 was somewhat of a bust, I finally figured out how to grow watermelons in this climate and soil. And that, my friends, is what we call a small victory. Anyways, let's move along and dive into what I experienced with the varieties. Honey nut, butternut, squash. Honey nut, butternut squash just didn't perform well for me overall. Firstly, it was a small plant, but that's the nature of this variety. It's more of a compact vine, so smaller vines, smaller leaves, smaller fruits, even smaller flowers. But with the misfortunes that my garden faced this last year, that means that it was an easy target for squash bugs and cucumber beetles to bring down. I had three vines initially. One went down shortly after transplant due to cucumber beetles, and the other two struggled to grow for a few months. The fact that they were transplants probably didn't help any either. I actually purchased these seedlings. 
They only grew to about two or three feet in length and tried to fruit, but they dropped all fruit that they put on. I would like to try this variety again because I did not confirm whether or not it was resistant to vine borers, and I also didn't get to try the fruit. People rave about this variety, so I'd like to get the chance to try the squash. If you're growing in a small space or within containers, this might be a good one to try. I did confirm that much. It's nowhere near as aggressive as traditional squash vines, and that was kind of a disadvantage because I really needed these plants to take off after the cucumber beetles descended upon them. This one did get attacked like the seedlings did, and I'm wondering if that may have played a part in why it never thrived. So I can't speak on true boar resistance with this variety until I have another go at it, even though it chugged along for quite some time. I'm fairly certain the boars did not take this one down. I do believe it was the squash bugs. This variety chugged along long enough that it should have been taken down earlier if the boars were going to take it down. But again, I cannot confirm or deny resistance here. It had a very thin stem, maybe smaller than the tatume. Therefore, resistance is promising as it would be difficult for a boar to take up residence inside such a thin stem. It's definitely not as hardy as other varieties, but it really wasn't given conditions to thrive in either. Grand Sucrane Dewberry F1. This was a hybrid butternut type. It gave me two very large fruits struggling to bloom and fruit in the heat. Typical of a lot of different varieties of squash. This was one of the last remaining living plants, so I can confirm that it has wonderful borer resistance. It was delicious green and immature, but I have yet to try it ripe and sweet. The fruits were quite large. I have one I'm cooking this week that weighs close to 10 pounds. So if one vine gave us 20 pounds of food in those awful conditions, I'd say it's a winner. This variety may be hard to find though. I purchased this variety through Nikitovka Seeds, which is a Ukrainian seed company, but I purchased them before everything started happening last year. Since there seems to be some documentation needed in order to order seeds from them now, eventually I'll look into it more so I can place future orders, but it's a process I'm not yet familiar with and haven't attempted to do. Let's go ahead and move on along to the next one. Now this one, I cannot pronounce the name, but I will put it on the screen for you. This is a pumpkin variety. Now I absolutely loved the one squash I got from this plant. It was green and it was absolutely delicious. This variety is more intended to be eaten as a ripe winter variety, but I was attempting to find green varieties, immature winter squash, that would be delicious substitutes for zucchini. And this was a winner. It was one of the first plants that went down due to the vine borer though. Yeah, this one is not going to be suitable for anyone who has vine borer issues. It went down just as quickly as a zucchini plant. Even though it was a no-go in my garden, it was absolutely delicious and I would plant it again and use my injection method. It was listed as a Machada, but I'm highly doubtful that it was actually one of them. Long Island Cheese. This is one you've likely heard of before, and this was another solid winner in my garden. It was only minimally phased by the heat and gave me several delicious small squash. It really tried to take off as the heat waves began to subside. Both green and ripe, as well as in between, it was an absolute delight. Sweet, firm, and mildly flavored. It was one of the most successful and was the second to last one standing. It was absolutely riddled with squash bugs during its last days, so we'll say this one is highly resistant to the vine borer. Usually, if a plant is going to go down via vine borers, they are not overrun by squash bugs first. Usually, they get taken out before the squash bugs get to take them down. This variety will give you lots of tender green squash to use in place of zooks and kirknecks, so this one is highly recommended by me. To boot, this variety is incredibly easy to source. You can find it through almost any seed shop. Rampicante squash. In the past, I've discussed this one. It's perfect and absolute must grow in boar ridden areas. Delicious green, ripe, and anywhere in between. I absolutely love this one whenever you catch it right in the middle. 
It also struggled in the heat and eventually fell, but it was one of the last four to five standing. This was its second year displaying vine borer resistance here, and it's going for its third. Zadana Pumpkin. I might have just butchered that name, but I have no idea what happened with this variety. I think this one just failed to thrive as a seedling, and I'm going to try it again if I have seeds left, so we'll definitely see. I do believe I actually planted this one twice, so it may have went down due to the cucumber beetles twice in a row. Because after that big failure with the seedlings, I turned around and replanted everything. But I don't know that I actually replanted this one or if it just failed the second time. My memory is absolutely terrible at this point. Seminole Pumpkin. This one struggled to take off and required replanting. I'm going to have to trial it again this year as it just didn't perform wonderfully overall. I think the plants were too damaged at the seedling stage, and I'll have to trial it again. It lasted for quite some time, so I'm leaning towards borer resistance with this one. I will have to confirm that this year whenever I replant it. Pennsylvania Dutch Crookneck. I think this one gave me two decently sized fruits, then struggled with the heat until it succumbed to squash bugs. It was absolutely delicious while green and resisted vine borers for quite some time. I cannot confirm that it did not go down to borers, but I highly doubt it. It made it until August. No squash vine makes it to August around here unless it's resistant to the borers. Usually all vines are going down by June. Usually by mid-June most of our plants have already gone down if they're not either resistant or being injected with Bt. So this one has some resistance, successfully replaced summer squash, and it produces large fruits which makes it a lot easier to process. It deserves a place in the garden without a doubt, so this one will definitely be grown again. Tatume Squash. This one was a confusing variety. It actually did quite well overall and was another one of the last standing varieties. The last squash of the season came from this one, Sucrine, and Long Island Cheese, so those were the last three I harvested from. However, this is why it was confusing. It was both a long standing variety and the second variety to go down due to the borers. I actually had three of this plant and two were planted in the same hole. One of those two went down due to vine borers early in the season and the one that was an inch away from it, the stems were touching in the ground that were right beside each other. Somehow one went down and one stayed until the end of the season. It's both resistant and prone. So I really don't know what to tell you here. It is definitely worth growing and it was a great variety, great resistance, but prone at the same time. So my advice here is if you'd like to try this one, plant double. So if you want two plants, plant four. If you want four plants, plant eight. This was definitely the best tasting squash at the green stage. Far better than any other green squash I've ever had. Grilled Tatume is out of this world, you guys. It is so good. It will forever be a staple among my green squash varieties. It surpassed Rampicante in my book, which says a lot. The fruits are also small, so they're more personal sized. This, besides the Rampicante, is the variety I'm telling you guys to go for. Dickinson Pumpkin. This one just grew vines. It put on one squash that was quickly aborted. I think the heat was simply too much for this variety. It was the first one to bush up nicely and begin to run, but it never provided squash. It was the third or fourth variety to go down, but squash bugs seemed to have started on that end of the garden. So when the squash bugs did make their grand appearance, they started with the Dickinson pumpkin. I cannot confirm nor deny any resistance to the vine borer. I believe this variety needs a second chance and better growing conditions because I'd really like to see this one take off, and I would really like to see some success out of this variety, so we're going to have to grow this one again. Closing thoughts. With all of the challenges faced, most of these varieties will be given another chance in 2023, with the exception being the first variety to succumb due to borers. My mulch will be pulled up, and the ground will be tilled before the last hard frost. This will help to kill off the cucumber beetles and squash bugs that are hiding beneath it. Leaving it in place over the winter seems to have contributed to the cucumber beetle problem, as the 2021 winter was the first time I'd left it in place rather than tilling. 
Most planting holes will start off with three or four seeds, and the two weakest will be trimmed when they reach roughly 12 inches in length. At 24 inches, the strongest vine will be selected. This will help plants to collectively weather cucumber beetle pressure while quickly shading the root zone within a short period. So this will be how I try to battle both adult cucumber beetles and any potential early heat waves this year. In any case, I thank you guys so much for sticking around, and if any of you guys are still here watching after so many months of being gone, I'd love to hear how things are going in your garden. I'm not sure how many of you are still around, because I know it's generally not advisable to just go missing on YouTube, but you know, this, this channel is a labor of love. It is definitely labor, and I just love doing it, so... It gets a little hard to dedicate the time that I need to a channel, especially whenever it could take upwards of 10-20 hours to edit a video, to film a video. So again, I'm happy to hear about how your garden's going. Let's get growing, and here's to a wonderful 2023 growing season, everybody. Thank you for dropping in. Bye-bye!